On May 4th, your favorite Star Wars day, SpaceX revealed the new extravehicular activity EVA suit. That's right, the suit astronauts will wear when walking in space, on the moon, and eventually on Mars. They're sleek, lightweight, and definitely futuristic. But as they say, not all that glitters is gold. Despite their impressive technology, these suits are still far from being the definitive astronaut attire. In this video, we'll take a look at all the details about these suits, their strengths and weaknesses, why they still have a long way to go, and how they'll be tested this very summer in a spectacular mission. Back in February 2022, Jared Isaacman and SpaceX announced the Polaris program, a series of missions designed to rapidly advance SpaceX's development of technologies needed for human space exploration. Because, yes, up until now, SpaceX has made small rockets, medium rockets, cargo capsules, crewed capsules, the most powerful rocket in history, and the largest spacecraft ever created. But all of that is useless if you can't put people out there walking in space, on the moon, or on Mars. And with the unveiling of these new EVA suits, we're one step closer to colonizing the Red Planet. In fact, SpaceX has literally said they're going to build millions of these suits. So, just like with Starship, the design has to be easily scalable and mass-produced as cheaply as possible. Now, you might think these new suits look similar to SpaceX's previous ones, that intravehicular activity IVA suit. But trust me, there are plenty of differences. In fact, as they've already explained, these new suits will replace the old ones. So say goodbye to those outdated suits, because their days are numbered. First up, let's look at the helmet. The visor is golden, and this is due to the material used to block direct sunlight when the astronaut is in space. It goes without saying that without an atmosphere, the sun's rays can blind you if you don't have the visor down, so this was a necessary improvement over the IVA suits. The helmet also incorporates cameras to record and livestream everything the astronaut is doing. Thanks to the Starlink satellites, they'll be able to broadcast live from space without interruptions and with unprecedented quality. The most innovative element to the helmet is undoubtedly the heads-up display, which is what they call the transparent interface that appears on the helmet's visor. It will show the astronaut all kinds of necessary data during the mission, such as oxygen levels, temperature, pressure, humidity, etc. This device is similar to those already incorporated in many fighter pilot helmets, allowing pilots to obtain necessary information without looking away from what they're doing. Many cars, for example, also have these types of displays that allow drivers to focus on the road at all times. But enough about the helmet. Let's move on to the suit itself. Here, we find many peculiarities, since a suit designed for spacewalks is nothing like a suit designed to stay inside the spacecraft's cabin, which is what they had until now. So, the first thing that will catch our attention is that the new suits will be noticeably more robust. Why? Simply because they must be pressurized, meaning filled with pressurized air. This way, pressure can be maintained inside the suit similar to that on Earth. Since there's no pressure in space, if the suits weren't pressurized, fluids in the human body would start to evaporate, causing tissue damage, respiratory problems, loss of consciousness, and, well, you know the rest. This has always been the big problem with astronaut suits. They're very bulky because they have to be pressurized. And SpaceX wants these new suits to be suitable for everything, walking on Earth and walking in space. So what they've done is design joints that are flexible when the suit is unpressurized, allowing astronauts to do activities like walking around, getting in the car, boarding the capsule, etc. And when pressurized, the joints become rigid, also allowing for mobility. However, making spacesuits is very complicated. Without going any further, NASA itself gave up on manufacturing the new astronaut suits for walking on the moon with their Artemis missions and handed the contract over to Axiom, which is now finishing up the new suits. But of course, with many delays and problems. So, how is it possible that SpaceX has made them so quickly in just a couple of years? Well, it's pretty simple. They haven't finished them yet. This design is by no means definitive. One of the features they're not telling us is that the suits they've presented 
don't have leg mobility. That means astronauts won't be able to bend their legs during the spacewalk. It's not a big deal because the spacewalk they're going to perform will be very basic. But the suit is far from being usable on Mars, on the Moon, or even just outside the space station. And it's not just because it lacks leg mobility. It's also missing an essential element that undoubtedly adds the most complexity to the suits. They're missing a backpack that can contain the life support system, providing oxygen, pressure, and autonomy to the suits. So how are the astronauts going to go out into space without that backpack? Very simple, with an umbilical cable connected to the spacecraft's life support system. SpaceX suits would actually be comparable to the suits from NASA's Gemini missions in the 1960s. Those suits were used for the first American spacewalks in Earth's orbit, and they were also connected via an umbilical cable to the spacecraft's life support system. This is where we can really appreciate and compare the two spacesuits. Obviously, the SpaceX ones look much more futuristic and will be much more comfortable and safe than the Gemini mission suits. Lastly, the astronauts' boots are made with materials used in the Falcon 9's interstage and the Dragon capsule's trunk. These are materials SpaceX knows can withstand the conditions of outer space very well, and so they've decided to use them for manufacturing the spacesuits as well. All right, let's talk about the Polaris Dawn mission, which will be the first mission of the Polaris program and the one where these suits will be tested for the first time. It's scheduled for no earlier than this summer, and we've known the crew for two years now. Among them are Jared Isaacman, an American entrepreneur and fighter pilot who will be the mission commander, Scott Petit, a retired U.S. Air Force lieutenant colonel who will act as the mission pilot, and two SpaceX employees. The first is Sarah Gillis, lead space operations engineer, who will be a mission specialist, and Anna Menon, who is also lead space operations engineer and will have the same role as Sarah. The mission will be carried out with the Falcon 9 rocket and aboard the Crew Dragon capsule, which, by the way, has had to undergo several modifications to allow for a mission with these characteristics. Because this mission is going to be, get this, nothing less than the crewed mission that reaches the highest orbit in history. In fact, the goal is to cross the Van Allen belts, something that hasn't been done since the Apollo missions to the moon, and it will serve to collect valuable radioactivity data to better understand the effects of radiation on the human body. To do this, they will place the Dragon at an altitude of 1,400 kilometers above sea level. That's triple the height of the space station. However, it wouldn't be safe to do a spacewalk at such a high altitude, with such high radiation levels. So once the experiments inside the capsule are done, the altitude will be reduced to an orbit of 700 kilometers at its highest point or apogee. After about seven orbits at this altitude, the long-awaited spacewalk with the new EVA suits will finally take place. To make this possible, the Dragon has had to be modified. For starters, the Dragon's docking port has been removed and replaced with a hatch to exit to the exterior, with clamps to facilitate the astronaut's exit and entry into the spacecraft. Because the Dragon doesn't have an airlock, the entire capsule will have to be depressurized before the spacewalk. In total, this spacewalk will last about two hours from the time the Dragon is depressurized until it's repressurized. The entire event will be broadcast in 4K to Earth, thanks to the laser communication technology of the Starlink satellites, a technology that will be tested for the first time. So, I don't know about you, but I'm already dying to see this incredible mission. Thank you, spacers, for joining me in this video. I hope you'll join me next time as we keep exploring the technology and science about space and our journey to explore the final frontier. This is the Space Technician, signing off for now, and I'll see you space cowboys in the next one. Before I go, Jinji, get in the robot. <laughs>